Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today we have Nvidia announcements. The 12400 is amazing. AMD's 3D chips are better than you think. Ryzen 7000 gameplay and Intel's ARC GPUs are in trouble. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, while I streamed quite a bit of CES yesterday, there's still a lot of big stories to discuss, starting with Nvidia's announcements. Of course, if you follow the channel, you know most of these from leaks, but let's go over it. First, they went over new 1440p G-Sync displays that get up to a whopping 360 hertz. Next, they announced their RTX 3050, which is definitely a nice boost over the 1650, but they priced it at 200. $50. That's important because AMD announced their 6500 XT for $50 less. We'll have to see how they compare, but that definitely wasn't a nice pill to swallow. Next, they announced a couple new mobile GPUs, and finally is the RTX 3090 Ti. Here, they went over basically nothing and told us to wait until later this month to find out more. Of course, what does it matter given it'll likely be sold out in seconds anyway? But first, if you love talking PC hardware and gaming, make sure to join the GamerMail Discord server. It's a place for hardware enthusiasts like yourself to talk about what you love. And it's free, so don't wait any longer and join the Discord for hardware lovers everywhere at discord.gg slash GamerMail. Next up for today, while they didn't really mention it during their CES event, Intel released their non-K CPUs, and with it, reviews have dropped on one of the most interesting chips on the list, their i5-12400, and let's just say, I'm impressed. Starting things off, Intel's 12400 and AMD's 5600X are neck and neck in gaming when you remove the power limits on Intel's 12400 and use Precision Boost Overdrive for AMD. And at stock, they're essentially the same as well. When it comes to professional workloads, they're also fairly neck and neck here as well. And it's now that I hear some of you wondering how this is so good. A new CPU that's essentially tied with an old CPU. Well, here's the thing. The i5-12400 is nearly $100 cheaper than the 5600X, and it even includes an iGPU. Really, Intel's part is better positioned against AMD's 5600G, but it completely crushes that CPU. And it's still cheaper. If you want to save even more money, you can get the 12400F, which is essentially the same part but with the iGPU disabled for just $179.99. That's well over $100 less than the 5600X. And if you didn't know, you can actually buy them right now and I'll have affiliate links to those in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. Next up, while I went over AMD's CES event yesterday, there's a couple huge things I failed to fully go over, mostly because I was trying to do the streams, edit, watch other events, and all of that at the same time. Either way, first, while I went over the 5800X 3D yesterday, I didn't discuss benchmarks. Well, they're a lot better than I think many know. For one, AMD showed off a few games showing around the average 15% like we originally heard. But you may not have heard that this was against their Ryzen 5900X, not the 5800X, which is what the new 3D part is. So it actually does this well against their 12-core part. And it didn't stop there. The 5800X 3D even beats Intel's 12900K in most games. Of course, these are first-party tests, and it will still surely lose in multi-threaded benchmarks, but still, that's definitely not bad. Next, I talked about AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPUs, which AMD's CEO Lisa Su went over, how they're built on TSMC's 5 nanometer process, etc. But AMD also showed their 7000 CPU actually running Halo Infinite, and it's here where she says, And I can tell you that all of those Zen 4 cores are running at 5 gigahertz during this demo. Yes, I mentioned 5 gigahertz yesterday, but this is a pre-production model, and that's just what it's running then. Basically, Ryzen 7000 could get even better than 5 GHz across all cores by the time it's released. Talk about big performance. And lastly for today, if you watched my Intel stream, you know that I was pretty disappointed with their CES event. Sure, they announced Mobile Alder Lake along with the KS series that gets up to 5.5 GHz, so they didn't actually tell us what CPUs they are, and all of that was nice, but there's one thing Intel didn't say much about, yet it's definitely the company's biggest news, and that's their discrete ARC GPUs. Don't get me wrong, they showed off hyperencoding with their deep link tech and talked about one random game getting XESS, but they didn't give us a single benchmark. 
To top it off, there's one thing not many people are talking about. If you remember, just last month I went over a gameplay trailer that Intel shared, and at the end it showed a desktop and laptop with Q1 2022. Fast forward to CES, and Intel shows Q1 again, but this time it's only a laptop. And sure, they mentioned system builders already with the GPUs, but no talk of the DIY market. Plus they say this while showing Q1. Shipping Intel Arc to leading mobile OEMs. That was a pretty fast change in less than a month. And don't forget that Intel's high-performance GPUs were originally slated for 2021. Oh, and a recent leak suggested that their GPUs have in fact been postponed until March. Basically, it's looking like there may be trouble with Intel's cards. And Tom's hardware seems to think the same thing. Of course, we've seen performance suggested around a 3070 to 3070 Ti, but if only notebook GPUs are released before Q1, Intel could be in serious trouble. AMD and Nvidia's next-gen cards are expected later this year, and they're set to get huge performance gains. So what may look good now likely won't later. Of course, there's still the GPU shortage to contend with, but hey, maybe I'm wrong. CES just has me worried. And let's not forget that Intel left us waiting so long for desktop 10 nanometers that they had to skip a couple generations before finally bringing it. So while that does it for today, are you excited for Intel's upcoming GPUs or are you just a little bit worried about it? And what about Ryzen 7000 CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.